recording now. Again, I'm just gonna do a slight repeat because I think I said one sentence that might've been uh, relevant to what we're going. All right, this class today is gonna to be dedicated and devoted to assisting us with the skill sets needed for us to effectively complete assignment eight. Assignment eight is the results and discussion. And this is one of those things that's gonna be really key. Now I'll tell you when I'm asking you guys to do the results section, it's not just being like, I wanna write about anything that I want. There is what's referred to as a three-step process that I'm asking everybody to complete when they're doing it. Now we're gonna work on this three-step process for I'll say 44 minutes today to make sure that we can do it well. This is one of those situations where I need all of you to sit back and let me know if you're having any questions and or concerns because after doing this, you'll be going off and doing it on your own, right? So again, if you don't wanna ask questions in real time with your microphone, put it in the chat. If anything's in the chat, um, I'll promise today, I won't say cite who I'm getting it from. I'll talk from, let's say anonymous, if that's making it so that you won't um, have any comments in class and or communicating with me outside of class in the event that you're not understanding it. However, I hope that I can create a safe space that people are not fearful of saying, Dr. Barnes, I don't get what it is that you're doing, right? So um, yeah, without that, I guess without further ado, um, let's kind of get right into it, right? Um, now, this right here is the class list. I just sent the email to the class. I think it worked a little bit because we got a little bit more people up in here. Um, now to do assignment eight, the first thing you have to do is know how to navigate the course. And I think most of us do, but I'm gonna show this. Um, I, I do every once in a while, I'll get comments from people who are asking questions like Dr. Barnes, I can't even find a syllabus or where is the data for um, our surveys? Now, when you log into the course, you'll probably see this. And then when you log into this, what you'll do is you'll go to the content area. Now, when you go to content, the first thing you might wanna click on is um, going over to syllabus, 411 syllabus and course prep. Now in here, I talked about this last class, I did a lot of cleanup. Those of you who are with us, everything that you've done in the past, it, this folder was getting very crowded. In my mind, there was no reason for you to have to go in here and sort through 16 other files to find the eight files, actually no, the two files that each of you are needing. And again, everybody's going to different files, so I wanted to clean things up. So when you go in here, there's two folders now. Old survey stuff, that's all the stuff that we've done that got us up to where we are right now. New survey stuff is what we wanna click on. That's current to what we're doing right now. When I click on the new survey stuff, it will take us to this folder. Now, as a result of learning that Alex is not gonna be here, I'm gonna use him as an example. Right, so I'm going to go to the folder of the group that he's in. Um, I think he's the M and MHJD group, right? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to click on the information. Now, I'm going to go over two things. One, I'm going to go over descriptive data. So I click this file. It's actually already open right here. Um, this is the descriptive data, which we've talked about before. And I'm also going to open up the one that's dedicated towards him, which is the correlation McBean. Again, it's kind of hinting at his last name right there. And that file is also open right here. I think I owe him an apology because I think I told everybody my plan was to create this. I actually wonder if the color this didn't show, but my objective was to indicate which of these correlations are significant, right? By highlighting some of them yellow and highlighting some of them green. All right, now it looks like I may have only done that with some of the early ones at the very beginning. If you find that there is nothing in green, nothing in yellow on your data sheet, Again, you will not have the luxury, in my imagine, um, in my opinion, to do this without communicating with me. So reach out to me, office hours, send me the file, ask me the question of which of these are significant, and I can let you know. Um, but again, this just goes to talk about, this is a research project. We're at the point where doing things on my own at the very last minute in isolation, it's really not gonna be the um, approach that, to get you to where you need to go. So that's kind of an apology, but looking at this, pulling this out, I would imagine he's probably not the only one. Now, I don't like Alex very much, but um, that might be the case. But I'd imagine I might have done this mistake with others as well. So please make sure if you open up your document and you don't see anything, it's highlighted yellow or green, make sure you reach out to me so you can effectively do the assignment. Because looking at this, I clearly see that there are some items and surveys that definitely are significant that are not indicated as such. And if he waited until 11.15 on the due date to submit this assignment, he might reach out to me, he might text me, he might even call me if he wants to, 
but um, I'm not going to guarantee I'm going to be up at 1115 waiting to help somebody at that time. So again, let's change the approach that we're doing. Let's really get involved and engaged. And um, I think all of us will be in good situations. Um, okay. Now, the other aspect of finding where you need to go in this course is to find out the Dropbox, right? Now, to go to the Dropbox, I think we all know this. We'll click on Dropbox, and that will take us to the appropriate folder. I went to a folder A8, which I think everybody knows refers to Assignment 8. And on the Assignment 8, I opened up the document, which is explaining, um, which is explaining Assignment 8 for all of us. Now, I went over the rubric just a little bit. Actually, I don't think I went over the rubric as much when we talked about it last class, but I did focus on that. When you open up Assignment 8 and you go down through all of this, right? We need to make sure that every item on the screen, you understand what it means. And I think I've done a great job in communicating these aspects to let people know, like, look, I'm putting it in clean and clear English and giving you some hints. As long as you understand what each of these lines are asking you for, right? You should be able to um, effectively complete this assignment. This line right here is saying it must accurately describe the experimental design, right? Now it's another aspect of it, right? So this right here is talking about whether it's a between subject. Now, if you guys remember, there's several options. We have a between subject design, we have a within subject design, and then we have a mixed subject design, right? So the design that we're actually looking for right here for this is going to be, wow. The design that we're gonna be using for this is going to be the um, between subjects design. It's because we're comparing between subjects. Um, actually, no, I'm sorry. It would actually be within subject designs because people are being asked all the measures that we have. Now, when you're getting to this point right now, if you don't know what this means, that's when you gotta open up the textbook. That's when you need to go open up some of the readings that we've done before. Look at the notes that you've taken to sit back and get that aspect. And if that doesn't get you in the right direction, when you wanna reach out to me and say, Dr. Barnes, I don't understand this. And we will go through the process to um, make sure you get to that type of understanding. But going through each item on this rubric is the best way to ensure that you have um, completed these tasks. All right, now, thing that I'm gonna focus on today is this item right here. Ooh, why is it not working? Here we go. Is this item right here. It must include results on the first test using the three-step process. Now, I believe one of the videos, I think it's 9.27. However, if you think about it, we did chapter nine in the second week of that, like, woof, that was a long time ago. So I wanna make sure that we really go into detail and focus it and when some of the quizzes. Again, we do have a culture of some of you who are just taking the quizzes and failing every single item as opposed to learning what I'm hoping to promote. So I am going to um, go over this three-step process, show you how um, this rubric works, and make sure that we have the skill sets to kind of sort through the information that we need. All right, so looking at this item, I think I said before, in this assignment detail, if something is in bold, green and underlined, that information and that concept is defined. And it's defined in the glossary. So it must include results of the first test using the three-step process. Now you might sit back and be like, what in the world is the three-step process, right? But again, I've told you what this means about being green, bold and underlined. So there's a glossary in this document. And, and look at it, here it is, glossary right here. We also talked about experimental design one and experimental design two, which was in bold. So if you don't know what those things are, you need to make sure that you go back up to the, go back down to the glossary and read it. But in addition, in addition to that, even if that does not help you, you still can reach out to me for clarification. Again, I don't create this glossary to be a, don't talk to me, um, cause it's written. If you still need additional help, that is what I am here to help you with. All right. Um, Research hypothesis, AP, I still don't see what Dr. Barnes is talking about. Oh, oh, wait, 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 here we go. Now I do, the three-step process, right? Now I'm gonna go over this reminder, but I'm gonna ask for some individuals to read this so that we can um, really make sure that we are getting the point that needs to be addressed with this. Let me blow this up a little bit, center it, to make it easier for all of us to read. All right, can I have a volunteer, I guess, to read the first, um, 
paragraph. A step one, at the top. Yep. First, relate whether or not the comparison was significant. All right, now let's just pause right there. First, you want to relay whether this not the significant comparison was significant. Now, I want to make sure because this is not in here. What did I say you should look for in your results to know whether your results are significant or not? Highlight. You highlighted it. Highlighted it. Now, if I highlight it green, now this isn't true for Alex, right? Um, that's saying it's definitely significant. And then I believe the ones that are not really significant, but they're close, like it's a trend, like it's almost significant. I said I was going to highlight those in yellow. Now, I'm going to probably spend some time after today's lecture to go back in and uh, make sure that I can convert those items for everybody to make them green and or yellow in the appropriate way. But um, that's what you should look for. And you're right, Derek. You have to remember this. It won't be in writing. This comes from making sure that we're here today and being engaged. All right. Thank you, Deja. Can you continue reading on? Second, you rely the results and statistics. All right, you have to relay the resulting statistics, right? Um, now, how do you relay the resulting statistics? I'm gonna sit back and change this right here. Now, um, let me go to my screen, and then we're gonna go right here to um, this item. Now, when we sit back and talk about the resulting statistics, I'm gonna do this because you guys are not in my stats class, right? Even though we probably went over it before, um, it's not, being drilled into you guys as much as it can be. The statistic that we're talking about when we're doing correlations is R. R is the statistic. So when we sit back and say that you have to relay the appropriate statistic, right? Let me clear every, all the other drawings that are on here. Because what I didn't do for you guys is highlight what's significant for this. So let me go over and look at the ones that are significant. Oh, that definitely is. That definitely is. I'm going to highlight the ones yellow that are close in the event that you want to talk about it. Uh, 20 and it's 26, yeah. OK, so we're saying the statistic that we're reporting, since all of these are correlations, I want to make sure that you guys understand that. What we're doing in all this, these tables I give you are correlations. And the statistic for correlations is what? What did I say the statistic is for correlations? Uh-oh. R equals. Yes, R, right? And I, like I said, R equal, because that's how you kind of finish it. You're right. So it's R. The correlations, the statistic is R. Now, looking at Alex's work, there's a couple of these correlations that are um, significant. Now, maybe if people in his group can help me because I don't feel like going back to looking at it, right? But I'm going to make up something um, for here. He has a survey about celebrity, right? Um, and then an aspect about believe, right? Um, I, be I think one of these aspects is believe. It's like, do you believe the happiness portrayed by celebrities is real, right? Actually, that can't yeah, be. Yeah, that one. Right, that's one of them. But then celebrity is another item. Um, we're gonna make we're gonna make this up. I'm just gonna sit back and write it down so I can get this clear, right? And then make it so it's not really just for him. Celebrity is um, talking about. Um, do you trust celebrity? Right. That's what I'm, I'm gonna make it. Forget that if that really is. And the other is. Do you believe their happiness? Let me tell you, I know for a fact there's um, individuals who, and that's not even forget about celebrities. I have a friend of mine that just committed suicide, um, attempted suicide recently. And it's really funny because, um, yeah, I'll be honest, I feel like I live a very happy life. There aren't too many people that I am uh, jealous of, especially when I sit back and think about um, success in high school. We got a couple people that worked on The Walking Dead show. Right. She's not making a lot of money, but I love that show. I would love to be even an extra on that show. I had a couple of people who are lawyers who are successful doing certain things. But yeah, I don't look on my Facebook page with my friends and be like, man, I'm jealous of this person. But this girl, 
actually is a friend that I was actually quite jealous of. I mean, she's taken pictures um, in certain places. I think she was dating an MMA um, fighter who is um, apparently, you know, making all this money. They're making millions of dollars, mansions. And I'm just like, holy crap. Like, yeah, I can't compete with that, right? And she attempted to commit suicide um, about two and a half weeks ago, right? Now, she's not a celebrity, right? But, you know, she's portraying this level of happiness and success on social media. It's people that I actually know. And I'm just like, wow, I, feel, I felt some kind of way. Now, I don't feel that kind of way anymore. I feel kind of sad for her because, again, it's raising that question about do you believe the happiness that people are portraying on social media, right? So that right there is, is relevant to the question that we're having right now. So we're making your survey mean something else. And that's really just so that Alex, as well as everybody else, can have a concept that's abstract, right? So we rated, do you trust celebrities on a scale of one to five? And then we had people rate, do you believe of celebrities on a scale of one to five? Those are the two items that we're making out of this data for it to be, right? So now let's look at what we're focusing on first. I wanna focus on this, this item right here first. So the value of R that we have, right, is um, R, ooh, R equals 0.43. Now we round this to three digits. Now, since you guys are not in my stats class, if you don't round to three digits, it's fine as long as the number is accurate, but you should round this to three digits. I'll just say that, but I won't take off any points if you guys don't, right? So let's go back to the three-step process because, again, I tell you that I don't want you guys to sit back and have to do rocket science. I want you to be able to find, um, I want you to follow this three-step process, right? So let me go back to this, all right? Annotation. All right, so is this significant? Yes, right? So the first thing we wanna do is sit back and relay whether it is significant or not. I'm gonna open this up. We can say the correlation between, what are the two variables? Somebody tell me. Celebrity and believe. Are they significant or are they not? Because I said if they're green, they're what? And if they're yellow, they're what? And if they're not highlighted at all, they're what? So is it significant or is it not? It's significant. Are significant. Right? Now that's as simple as logging in here and looking at colors. Right? So we can write that step number one. Right? Let's go back to this document. That's how we do step number one. Let's go back to, um, oh, it's not letting me move yet. Go back to this right here. Second, relay the resulting statistics. Now, the resulting statistics are the information that we have right here, and I kind of already did that, right? So the resulting statistic is R R equals 0.438, right? The only other thing, and I'll try to make this a little bit clear for everybody, is since it's significant, right? What's the relationship between the value of 0.05? Since it's significant, right? Do we think that um, P is greater than 0.05, less than 0.05, or equal to 0.05? Less. Less than. All right. So you guys know these rules, right? Less than 0.05, up to 0.05. Now, we did step one, and we did step two, right? Now, and I actually spelled the word believe wrong. I feel a little embarrassed by that, right? Let's go back. Step number three. What is step number three? Get rid of annotation. Now click on the bottom. Then communicate the direction specific of the effect. All right. So what do I mean by direction and specific of the effect? All they gave me is the value of R. Dr. Barnes, I don't know what R means. But you know what? If you think critically, you guys do know what R means, right? Who can tell me what they know or what they remember about how R behaves? If it's a positive correlation, I believe that R will be positive. And if it's a negative correlation, the R will be negative. Yep. If it's a positive number, that means it's a positive correlation. But let me go into greater detail with that, right? What that means is this. If it's a positive correlation, that means across the people in this sample, 
if you rated believe higher, do you believe their happiness? Yes, I really believe them a whole lot. I'm, I'm like four and fives. That means you also rated celebrity higher, meaning that I also trust celebrities. That's what a positive correlation means. Now, if you say it's a negative correlation, what that means is this, and it can go either way, right? So I'm gonna say both of them, and I want you to realize that it's, it's pretty much saying the same thing. If you rate celebrity higher, do you trust celebrity? Yeah, I trust them, five, four, right? But then you also don't believe their happiness, right? So I believe that when they get on there and say, um, I love this product, but I don't believe the happiness that when they say, oh, me and um, so-and-so are happily married, right? You don't believe that. So you rate one high and you rate the other low. That's what a negative correlation is. And we gotta be careful because looking at this right here, um, a couple of these are negative. When you look at social skills and believe, that's a negative correlation. When you look at um, social skills and blocked, um, I don't know what that means or his concept, but that's a negative correlation. So we need to make sure that we talk about this in the appropriate way, mindful of the correlation, right? So we need to communicate, what does that mean? Say the data suggests that as ratings of belief are high, so are celebrity. Ladies and gentlemen, we have done a three-step process, which is everything that we need to do, right, for the first result. This is taking information that's foreign to many people in the world. This is looking at numbers and a table and a chart and making it mean sense. And let's look at what we just wrote right here, right? We're, we're being psychologists right now. We're saying that a correlation between celebrity and believe is significant. Right? As I should be is significant, not are. Yeah, because the correlation is the one thing we're talking about, not celebrity and belief. That's what got me off a little bit, right? We state the stat, the um, statistic. We also state the significance level. And the data suggests that as, that as ratings of believe are high, so are celebrity. Now, if it were negative, we would have said as believe are high, celebrity are low, right? But let me tell you, this is just the most basic way of getting this done. The reason why I say that is because, again, I, I always get people that, um, that might be in a group now. I don't think that's going to happen right now because many of you have different results. And um, you probably won't even be talking about the same correlations, even if you're looking at the same table that we have right here. However, when you look at step one, which is saying whether this, the correlation is significant, there's so many ways that we could do that. Now, what I did is a technique by saying capital celebrity and capital believe, right? But that's not the only way that you could have done that. You could have sat back and said, the correlation between the item and spelled out the entire item, which might've said, do you rate, do you believe the happiness of celebrities? And the item, do you, um, you see what's written in chat. Yes, 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 of course, of course. Yep, all right, and I hope you all know who I'm talking to. I hope you know who I'm talking to, definitely. All right, um, the data suggests that as rating believer, you can actually go into more detail, right? And sit back and um, explain the entire item. You don't have to say celebrity like I'm saying right here. You can have the entire item. You can say what it means on the survey, which is word for word. You can put it in quotations. You can do a shorthand description rather than celebrity. So literally, in, I, what I could do right here is I could read this. The correlation between do you trust celebrity, right? I'm reading up here, following here, and do you believe their happiness are significant, right? R equals 0.43, blah, blah, blah. The data suggests that as ratings of do you believe their happiness are high, so are, do you trust celebrity, right? And then here's the thing too. I said the word celebrity and believe, and that's what's in this table.
But you might look at this and be like, hmm, Dr. Barnes may have put the word celebrity up there, but I don't like celebrity. I actually like another nickname, another phrase that I think when I'm doing my results, it will be a lot more clearer to the reader. Let me tell you the diversity by which you can write the results to satisfy these three-step processes will never result in two people sitting down independently and coming up with the exact same thing. You will never have that. So when I do say the exact same thing, I don't even really get into how it happened. Again, what I do is I usually give both participants a zero for this assignment. Because what you did and what you got to really understand is this, the three steps that we just did, I said it was easy. We just went over it right now, but it's not easy. It's easy if you're taking notes. It's easy if you're following me and it's easy if you're engaged, but it is a rather difficult task. But for you to copy and paste results from someone else, you're cheating all of that type of learning, how to get information, assimilate information and to communicate it effectively, right? So it doesn't matter if the formatting is right, the results are right. What I'm trying to promote in this class is really being lost on it. So again, this three-step process is really something that's um, important for everybody to be able to do independently. Right now, I spent about what, 25 minutes going over this um, for everybody, right? Now, what I'm gonna do right now is, um, I'm gonna pick another one of these items. Draw, I'm gonna pick social skills and believe, right? Now we're gonna do this in a fictitious way. So we don't need social skills and believe to be what's really on the survey. We're gonna define it right here and we can make it believe, we can make it be whatever we want. You have to believe, <laughs> all right? And then social skill. All right, so I need some people with an imagination, right? This item that is believe, right? Um, what does that mean? Like we did a survey, imagine, right? And um, we had an item on believe. What is believe? You can volunteer to give me an idea what this item could have meant. Do you want it to be close to Alex's or? No, it can be whatever you want. Honestly, I don't like R. Kelly, but it could be asking people on a scale of one to five, do you believe you can fly? Or do you believe R. Kelly is <laughs> innocent? <laughs> you can put the fly one. And then for social skills, like you could be like, uh, do social skills enhance learning? I don't know. Okay. Do social skills enhance learning. Okay. All right. I like that. Now, now based on this, we got to do the three step process, right? Uh -huh. Now, somebody else, Derek, you gave us the items, the three-step process. You guys remember what step one was? So I need two volunteers right now. I need somebody to give me the hard, because it's not on the screen. I need somebody to give me the what step one is, right? And then somebody else to do step one. Step one is looking at your results and seeing uh, which ones are significant. All right, so we got to look at this. Okay, now I need somebody to tell me. We got to look at this chart, right? We focus it on one in particular. We need to find out or share whether it is significant. So, looking at this item that we're talking about, believe in social skills, is it significant? Somebody else other than Daria. No, it's not significant. Oh, it's not significant? All right, now remember guys, what did I say is what we do in order to demonstrate or show that it is significant? What color would highlight. you highlight it? It would be green. It would be green, right? Now let's look at this right here, right? And this is key. And this, this is kind of the steps that can get us lost. In order for us to do these two, we got to look at social skills and see where social skills meets up with believe that's the item 
And that item is right here. And this is listed as green. It's highlighted green. So this actually is significant, right? So I got Siani's contribution. We're just going to change it around. The correlation between, I believe I can fly, and whether social skills enhance learning is significant. All right, let me sit back and just spread it all out right there. All right, and that's because it's green. Okay, now I need two more participants. All right, what is step number two? All right, I got something in chat. It might be a contribution. Okay, I got your message. Let's see. All right, what, what's step number two? Two volunteers. Um, you would say R equals um, 0.36. Okay, now you know what? You're right. You're partially right. Now, here's the issue. There's two types of correlations. I think whoever I asked that before, you can have a positive correlation and a negative correlation. Okay, negative. I'm sorry. Yeah, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, you gotta, you gotta attend to that. Now, I also said you should round to how many decimal points? Okay, so three, six, five. Three, six, five. You're absolutely right. But I told you, right? That's what I would love for y'all to be, but this is not stats class. If y'all were in stats, I'd hold you to it, right? But so you let me know, Noni, do you want to round to three or you want to write this whole long number out? What you want to do? Wait, you saying I could put only R equals negative 0.4? No, 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 no. I'm asking, my question is this. I, I would love for you to round to three. That's what you should do, right? But you don't have to in this course, right? So I'm asking, do you want to round to three digits or do you just want to list all the numbers that are in that cell? No, just round. All right, so you're just going to round. Okay, now that's our choice, right? The next thing we'll do is we're going to do um, P, in relation to 0 0.5, right? Now, is this P greater than, less than, or is it equal to? Less. Less than, and that's because like, once again, it is significant. So we got steps one and two down, right? Off something make-believe right here in class, right? Um, all right. Um, now, so I need someone to tell me what step three is, and I need somebody else to do it. As belief goes down, social skills go down. Okay, now here's the issue. You're doing it, right? Let's go back, back up a little bit. So I'm going to call on you, right? Derek, you've already answered it, right? But we're going to come back. But I need to make sure we know what we're doing. What are we supposed to do for step three? And that's just citing what the requirement is. And you know what? Since you have that, I'm going to put it back up on the screen to make it a little bit easier for um, the next person to answer that question. What is step three? What are we supposed to do? To my other than Derek. Communicate the directions of the effects of the cohesion. Communicate the direction, specifics of the effect. All right, so let's go back. Um, actually, where were we? I think we were here. All right, so Derek, come back to you because you already did it, right? Um, As belief goes down, social skills go down. All right. As Believe. Oh, the readings of believe go down. But you know what though, let me tell you, I, I love what you just did, right? What you just did, you might want to enhance it as a result of seeing it. 
There are so many ways. I don't want you to feel like having to say ratings makes it, it might make it better with some opinion, but both work. So you said as believe goes down. Ratings go down. I mean, I mean, as believe goes down, social skills go down. All right, now here's the issue. I'm gonna focus on the accuracy of this statement and then I'm gonna come back to you and we're gonna let you make it a little bit more colorful, right? Now, mm -hmm. I went into this. I said a positive correlation means that as one variable increases, the other variable also increases, right? A negative correlation means as one variable increases, the other one decreases, right? So yeah. I would lose a little bit of points on this because that's not what he's saying. And that's why I mentioned before, this is, this is, I can, I try to make it easy, but we're spending 50 minutes of today's class on this, right? So it's not that easy. I think it's straightforward. If we're engaged, if we're taking notes, we know what we're doing, it can be done. But again, we have to continually go back to the source of information. We have to continually evaluate the information. That is not easy. That is not easy for a number of people, right? So, um, and again, I use that as an example to let you know that Derek, who's probably probably right now today, is probably one of the most talkative and engaged individuals, right? As a result of going back to the source or failing to attend to one little detail, it permits you to be off a little bit, right? So somebody else, who would tell me how to fix his statement to make it um, accurate? Um, from the chart, I'm not sure if we can tell which factor is going up and which one is going down. Okay, now you can't tell from looking at this. Now we can, we definitely can, right? And I'm going to show you how we can tell which one is going up, right? The mm -hmm. reason we can tell which is going up and which one is going down is due to the value of R. We already put R in here, right? So R right here equals negative 0.365. So we don't need to see a graph. Like if we had a graph, you would see that it is negative. But since R is negative 0.365, we know that it would look negative. So let me show you what that would look like if I were to draw it. But again, you don't need to, right? It would have a scatter plot. R would be equal to 0.365. Five, it's a negative, right? And the data would kind of look like this. Maybe not perfect. And let me just sit back and draw the little best fit line. It would kind of look like that. That's supposed to be a straight line, right? Because it's a pretty strong correlation. We got a 0.3, right? And it's negative. So what, let me show you what this is saying. This is saying as this variable is high, right? Let's sit back and say right here, um, this is SS for social skills. And this right here is believe, right? As social skills is high for this particular person right here, right? Social skill is high because this is zero. That's a high number, right? Believe is low because zero is here that. So that's consistent with it being a negative correlation. The same thing is true here. This is kind of high for social skills, right? But when it comes to believe, it's it's low because believe, look at the distance from this axis right there, right? And then look at the flip side of it, right? So look at another data point on the other extreme. As social skill, as believe is high, right? Skills is low. So as believe is high, once again, with another data point, social skills is low. We get all of that information, not necessarily the one way to get it is to look at this graph that you're mentioning. One way is to have a graph and look at it and be like, oh yeah, I can see it. But we also get that information from the value of this. We just said that. If it's a positive um, value, then that means as one increases, the other increases. 
If it's a negative value, um, as one increases, the other decreases. So it's there. It really is there. It is a different way of looking at it. And again, it's, I mentioned before, this is the whole key of what we're doing because we got to look at this information and realize that this value of negative 0.365 is giving us some powerful information about how these two variables interact. All right. So again, let's go back to this. I'm asking people, how do we correct this? How do we correct what Derek gave us to make it true? Because he said, as believe goes down, social skills goes down. How do we correct this? You could say as belief goes down, social skills go up. Yeah. As belief goes down, social skills go up. Now I can go back to what Derek was saying. Derek looked at this and he made it seem like almost as soon as this came out my mouth, Dr. Barnes, I wanted to make this look a little bit more pretty. And that's actually good because you know what? Each of these steps you're going to be getting out of five points. So I actually may think that makes sense, right? He was wanting to add on here as ratings of believe, right? Now, it still works this way, right? By adding ratings. But as ratings goes down, as ratings of believe goes down, social skills go up. You could even add ratings of social skills go up or goes up. I think is the appropriate way of putting it. That's just making it. Derek is being like, look, I need to pass this class. I ain't done my work all semester. Dr. Barnes is not failing me. So I'm going to make sure I earn those five points needed for this. He's just making this a lot more clear. Both of them work, but you know, he, he wants to make sure he gets a five out of five as opposed to a four out of five. That four out of five will make it so that Derek will be in my class next semester. And the five out of five will make it so that he'll pass by the hair of his, the skin of his, I, I don't know. I don't think I know any phrases and I keep trying to use them when I do classes, it's kind of weird. All right, um, but again, we, we made something out of nothing. This is a very difficult task. We have to know some of the basics that I was talking about right here, about how R works. And I'm gonna put it on the screen right now, all right? R, right, behaves as such. Positive values mean as one variable increases, so does the other. For negatives, one increases, the other decreases. All right, let me see if I have that and it's on the screen. My little Zoom bar is in the way, but that's some very important facts for everybody to sit back and know and understand for that. Again, I'm showing you data. Everybody has to do at least three of these for assignment eight, right? And hopefully they'll all be significant. Um, sometimes they may not be, sometimes they may be yellow, which means they're close to significant. And the only thing would change is that if you have a one that's not significant and they're close, you wouldn't say P is less than 0.05. You just say P is greater than 0.05. So the reader knows like, wait, 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 wait. This person is trying to talk about something that's technically not significant, but yeah, I can see what they're doing. Since they shared the R, I can make up my own mind on whether I want to care about it or not, right? Researchers can, you're not lying to us. That's the most important key thing. Um, now, you know what? I thought we were going to have a little bit more time to have individuals do their own examples of this. Uh, we will not. I encourage people who are not understanding what we're doing right now, right? You can spend this weekend doing nothing and coming back next week or coming back when the assignment is due and panicking, or you can reach out to me to make sure that you understand what it is that we're doing, right? Um, I, I get it. I think it's culture in this class, even though I'm not sure if it's me or just the relationship you guys have with each other right, that individuals are kind of scared to um, speak up during class. But if you are scared to speak up during class, I, I, that's okay. I'm not going to sit back and challenge that belief, but I will challenge the belief that you can't reach out to me to get the assistance that you need. 
right? So please make sure that you understand what we need to do so that you can um, do it. I might go over this again and challenge the class to do something on Wednesday. Um, this is a skill set that's going to be needed, a skill set that you can't ignore. And um, it's a skill set that will haunt you if you don't do it well on assignment eight. All right, guys, it is 1020. I don't want to hold y'all over. Thank you for those who came to class, caught on your cameras like you're supposed to, came to class on time like you're supposed to. I think I'm getting a lot more engagement. Um, yeah, can't ask for anything more. Have a good weekend, guys.